If I meet a quarterback and I have an aging quarterback, I would bet on this guy because he, he showed me on film that he has some traits that you can't necessarily teach. North Carolina quarterback Sam Howe, early third round valuation for us, 79.08. Joe, you've had a chance to watch him his sophomore season when he had all those skilled players to work with versus this past year in which he had a little bit more on his plate. Uh, obviously the grade for him is, is a little bit more lukewarm. Uh, when you reflect on Sam Howell and what he presents and what he brings to the table, uh, what pops the most to you that he provided this year versus maybe more of what you wanted to see from Sam Howell? Big thing's toughness. This is a player that, like you mentioned, comes into this season with an entire new supporting cast and an offensive line that was pretty shaky from the year before where there was a lot of moving parts. And so everybody remembers it's opening week of the season, Sam Howell, potential QB1, Friday night Virginia Tech. What's this guy going to look like? Well, it didn't go great. But guess what? They continue to play the rest of the season, and if you paid attention, you saw an evolution of a player in Sam Howell where the same type of stuff that you saw before with some of the throws down the field and reasonable accuracy, but he added the layer of running the football to his game where this guy did not hesitate to take off. He was willing to scramble and you know try to compete after contact. He was dynamic in the red zone. And so the big evolution piece for Sam this year was the toughness that he showed by adding that running component to his skill set. Yeah, I'm glad you spoke about that in an optimistic way because I think this is a player that throughout this draft process, I think he's been underappreciated for what he did last year at North Carolina. And that was taking a team that early on was somewhat dead in the water, right? They had high expectations. They, I guess you could say, failed early on, but then he turned it around. And me personally, at the right value, I'm willing to bet on this guy just because he plays the game tough. And, and I value quarterbacks that approach the game with a tough mentality as far as they can deal with adversity and continue to, to get through it. And that's what Sam Howell did. So he's a guy in that second round range. I, if I meet a quarterback and I have an aging quarterback, I would bet on this guy because he, he showed me on film that he has some traits that you can't necessarily teach. Yeah, and, and you know, you, you guys have mentioned it, the toughness, the ability to run, but let's not forget, this guy can throw the football. You know, you saw some of the things he was able to do his sophomore year in terms of pushing the ball down the field. Outstanding deep ball thrower. Doesn't have the biggest arm, but he throws with touch, anticipation. He's accurate to all three levels. The decision making, you know, a little, little spotty here and there. You know, you want him to tighten that up. But in terms of having the necessary arm talent, he has it. I want to interject here real quick. And I'd like you to talk about the Phil Longo offense mm. and the concerns, because that, that's where I get stuck with yeah. Sam, right? Is it's, I agree from a um, lead by example perspective, the bucket shots down the field, some of the creativity within the pocket to extend plays, that's good. But this is an offense that doesn't have a lot of translatability because of what they ask the quarterback to do. And I'd love for you to provide a little context on that. Yeah, it's definitely concerning. Sam's got a big jump ahead of him. We're talking about an air raid offense, and there's variations of the air raid. But with Phil Longo, you basically have a static set where there's no motion. Everybody's in the same spots all the time. And it's binary reads where it's do this, and if that's not there, you do this. And so. And then if that's not there, you go. Right, run. you run. So the progression style stuff, the. Uh, layered concepts it's not stuff that he's been asked to do and so that's gonna be a jump for him and I think a lot about just some of the rhythm with his drops and working uh, just a regular set right he's gonna drop back and just the footwork and the sequencing and the timing that's gonna be a really big shift for him and so you know I don't know that you look at Sam Howell as a guy that can come in on day one and run your offense and that's why you know to, to Keith's point it would be great for him to go to a situation where there was a veteran in place that was kind of aging and he kind of had an opportunity for this guy to be an understudy and get a chance to acclimate, right? Because it's going to be a big curve for him. Yeah, and, I, and this is the biggest thing for me. And it's, un, like I said, unfortunate for him again is that his biggest player comparison is who? Baker Mayfield. Stock's Baker, never been lower. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And when Baker was playing good, we seen that this guy's stock was ultra high, right? He was a top five pick. And then it was unfortunate that Baker played bad this year. And the player comparison is still sticking to him. So I think everybody's looking at the flaws of Sam Howell, but there is some upside associated with this football player. Yeah, he has upside. I think the main thing for me, and it speaks to, to Joe's point about the offense is he leaves yards on the field, not getting to his check downs, not getting to those quick reads and those kind of hot routes type situations where the long ball isn't there. So to that point, that's something that I want to see him improve on. 
Uh, but he has all the traits to be a developmental quarterback in this league. Sam Howell, quarterback, North Carolina, early third round valuation for us here at TDM.